Howdy folks and welcome to the very first iteration of Cutting Grass with Dylan. So I've already cut all the grass, but I wanted to do a little weed eating because it's obviously been quite a while. Now, here in the past month and a half, two months, uh, we've had a lot of sunshine in the morning, rain in the afternoon. Sunshine, rain, sunshine, rain. So the grass never really fully dried and then it got wet again. And this hammered us for like two or three weeks. Then I had a baby. So I'm just now catching up on grass cutting. So you're gonna see some cars that, you know, look like they've been parked for decades, but let me rest assure you that this has been cut at least two months ago. And I did have it a lot shorter than this. We've just had so much rain and so much sun. And this is a good opportunity for me to, uh, you know, just talk with you guys, show you some projects that you haven't seen in a while and just check out what we've got going on here. So again, this is all the cars that have come out here to be parked. Some you'll see that you have seen in the videos before, some you haven't seen yet and it's just a good opportunity so you guys can see where are these cars now if you don't see a car out here get grass cut around it that does not mean i still don't have it or maybe i don't have it but if you have a question ask me about it in the comments below and i'll do my best to tell you exactly where it is and where the project stands we've got a lot more than just this we've got a ton in the shop and a ton on the other side of the camera so don't get worried if you don't see like the challenger i'm looking at it i'm looking at the four speed dart i'm looking at the camaro up there i mean all this stuff i'm not going to be cutting around but you at least know that it's still here so without further ado let's start with the fire truck starting off we've got the 1974 ford fire truck now if you watch the video on this one you saw we actually got it to run after sitting in a shed for, it was probably there for about 12 years. And once we got it to run, we cleaned it up, got it to where it could actually be a usable vehicle again, drove it home. <laughs> had to do a lot of work with this thing, you know, put a tire on it and, and, you know, really just had to do the basic stuff. But whenever you're working on a fire truck, it's kind of weird and you're just like, I don't know what to expect. This video, along with every other video that I've completed on a vehicle, will be down in the description below. So if you want to watch those, go check that list out. But this truck, it's it's been sitting. You know, there's not a whole lot you can do with a fire truck, but it still is used. Um, if you watched my Cordoba video, you saw where I actually pulled it out, stood up on top of it so I could get a good view of us driving it through the field. So, you know, it started up and moved around every now and then. It's just, you know, what do you do with a fire truck? I guess now that it's here, it's more of like a, hey, look, we got a fire truck and it's got a big American flag on it. So I kind of like having it around and we just keep it clean, keep it cut around it. And that's really all I do. But again, it still runs, it still drives, nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's just don't drive it very often because it's just very big. Up next is the 51 Ford. Now this is a four door. We made a video on this one and then, gosh, I just love this car. I actually did drive this one to church here recently. We had what's called old timey day where you dress up and you know, you kind of uh, basically live like you're in the past pretty much. And we drove this car to church because it was just so cool. I mean, it was well worth just uh, you know, pulling up and, and feeling like you're driving something from, you know, way back in the day. And this car actually drives pretty nice. It, I think about top speed comfortably is about 60 miles per hour. Probably could go a little faster than that, but I felt pretty good around 60. But again, it's just a good running and driving car. And what I'd like to do with this one is finish converting it all to 12 volt. It doesn't need a whole lot to do that. It just needs, you know, the basic stuff. But again, it, had new brakes, new tires, 
new carburetor rebuild and you know just all the good stuff to make sure that it was actually a good running and driving car and I love it. It's so solid. It's just it's honestly the perfect 50s era car and I really really love driving this thing. I just I don't know. I've always had a thing for shoebox Fords and when you find a really clean example of one it's hard not to pass it up. So finally getting to have one of these cars and, and see it be so clean and usable and drivable, it's just awesome. Now this is my first truck. This is a 1974 D100. It's got a 360 automatic and uh, had basically every option you could want from back in the day. Front sway bar, AC, power steering, power brakes, all the good stuff. I mean, again, it's just a really clean truck. It's got a little rust here and there, but overall it's just a really beautiful and clean example. And it, it's a funny story. This thing had broken motor mounts, a bad transmission, RV seats in it, like house carpet. It was just really rough off. So I got rid of all that, put a bench seat out of another truck, put a floor mat out of another truck, nice little radio and speakers, four barrel intake with an Edelbrock carburetor, new radiator, uh, had a transmission that I swapped all this stuff out with. Wheels and tires went with uh, chrome bumpers and aluminum grill instead of painted wheels and tires and all that stuff. And man, it looks so much better. It was all blue and white and I just, ugh, I didn't like it at all. But now with all this nice chrome, it looks pretty good. And again, this is like my first truck. So, you know, I took my wife on our first date in this truck. We drove home from our wedding in this truck. I mean, it's, it's got a lot of history in the family and I'm never ever getting rid of it. Now, it just, it stinks because it sits, but that's just how it is. It actually needs a wheel cylinder. That's why I parked it, because uh, one of the wheel cylinders in the rear has decided to go out, and I just haven't replaced it yet. But as soon as that gets done, the truck can go back in action. Uh, there's a few videos out there on this truck from way, way back. If you guys are an OG member, you know this truck. But again, this is my very first one, and it's not going anywhere if I have anything to do with it. Now this is a truck you have not seen on the channel yet. This is a 68 Dodge Crew Cab. It's a camper special, three quarter ton, two wheel drive, 383 automatic, tons of options. And this truck, according to what I was told, was actually used by NASA to transport like, I guess scientists or people who were important for NASA launches back and forth to wherever they needed to go because it's got NASA stickers all over it and it ended up being used as a farm truck when it was retired from NASA. So this older gentleman had it and he sold it to the collector 
who, if you watched the Ford era video from way back, uh, he had a big collection of Ford trucks and he had this Dodge. He had a thing for Dodge trucks and this is like one of the coolest ones out there, in my opinion, just because I like Dodges. So I ended up with this truck and like I said, I haven't done anything with it yet, but it does run and it yard drives. I mean, the brakes are there. They're a little bit, eh, it needs a gas tank. The tires are older, but they were new at one point, which I guess you could say that about every single tire. But again, this is something that's gonna come up in the future. Get a lot of good body parts for it, a lot of good stuff that, you know, will be used on it, but just still waiting for that moment to find an opportunity to make a video on it. Next on our list is the 2005 Neon SRT4. And you're like, what the heck is this thing doing out here? Why in the world would you have a Neon amongst all these other cool vehicles? Well, I'll tell you why. Now, I've got a plan for a vehicle that includes using the running gear, meaning engine, transmission, spindles, uh, axles, everything that I could possibly use off this Neon I'm gonna put in a different car. Because I think the Neon SRT4 is super underrated and this car is quick. It only has 94,000 miles on it. It looks rough, it's got rust in the rockers. It came from Florida, so it's just really a rough car. It has a rebuilt title, but I don't care. As long as it runs and drives great, and it does, that's all I needed. The only thing aftermarket they did to it was a straight pipe, blow off valve, so it whistles pretty good and it's just basically stock other than that. But I do have a lot of fun driving this thing. But again, it's gonna be an engine swap for another car in the future. 
just clearing out projects as we go because I want that. I'm really, really into like turbo stuff now. I've always wanted to get into turbo four cylinders, but I never had the opportunity until now. So be on the lookout for a video on that. Oh, the Mustang 2. Oh, it's up next. Man, is it so much fun. Now, the last video we did on this one was taking it to Ford Fest last year, doing the autocross, and really having an awesome time, putting down some pretty solid times overall. And unfortunately, you know, it's, I haven't driven it a whole lot since then, but it still drives. I parked it in this spot. I just, again, cut grass around it at this point. And, you know, the thing is that you can't drive them all, and I wish I could drive more of them. But, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this car. You put a battery in it, it'll fire right up, and you can drive it wherever you want. And, honestly, I should do that. So, if you want to see more on this thing, let me know because, you know, give me some ideas. Because I've done all the stuff that I wanted to do to it, and I just don't know what else what I want to do. And, you know, it's a 302 four-speed. It was sitting for 30-something years. I don't even remember how long at this point. But we put a cam, four-barrel intake on it, some good exhaust from Flowmaster, a DUI distributor and it turned into basically a mini rocket ship. Now it's not the fastest, but it will go. And I have a lot of fun with this car. So again, if you want to see more on it, let me know. Let me know down in the comments. Just uh, give me some ideas because I think it's an awesome car as it is.
Now here's another vehicle you haven't seen on the channel yet. This is a 1968 Dodge D200 Camper Special. So you kind of seeing a theme here. I like the Camper Specials. This truck is kind of a funny story. I bought this uh, later on after an auction. I tried to bid on it. Uh, this guy had a huge collection. He passed away, unfortunately. And I was bidding on this truck, and it turns out one of my really good friends, he won the truck. I was bidding against him, and uh, he had the truck for a little while. We ended up trading trucks that I had actually bought a truck from him. I traded it back to him for this truck, so it, it all comes full circle. I ended up with a pretty decent truck. It's a 318 Poly automatic, again, camper special, two-wheel drive, and the body is absolutely flawless besides some rust in the rockers and floors but it's straight as an arrow the engine's locked up so i haven't been able to make that video just yet but i'd really like to see this thing to run and drive possibly you know it's got the uh, big shifter in the column like a cable shifter but it's just a beautiful color like that seafoam green gosh i love it so heck we'll try it we will see you know again just got to get some projects out of the way and get this thing to not be locked up and we'll be on our way Now this is a Comet of sorts. I don't know what year exactly. It's a 64 or 5, but it's so clean. This is the nicer car that I got out of that collection that was uh, at the scrapyard. And it, it's just missing a cylinder head. For some reason, they pulled the head off and then just let it sit and ruined the engine. So now I've got to figure out an engine, but I've got one that's good. But of course, the block was cracked because that was the plan. Pull the one out of the 65 Falcon that we did a video on put it in this car and make it a running and driving vehicle. But unfortunately the engine's junk. So I've got another one, we'll see what we can make happen. But at the end of the day, this Comet is super clean, very, very little rust, not a whole lot of problems on that front. And it's a nice four door. It would be cool to clean it up and, and drive it and use it. And just to show you how long this thing's been sitting, I think it was tagged in like 89, but it has JCPenney brand tires on it. So when's the last time you saw JCPenney tires? I've never seen them personally. I've heard dad talk about JCPenney and Sears tires, but I just know I've seen Sears tires. I've never seen the JCPenney one. So I thought that was hilarious when I saw that for the first time. Now you're going to see two vehicles you have not seen yet. Two Fords. We've got a 65 or 66 Mustang next to a 70 Mustang. Both of them are coupes. Both of them are V8 cars. Um, the green one here that you see first is its rough. It's, it's very rough. Now I believe it's an original GT car. I'm not sure, but I think that's what it is. Somebody had spent a ton of money and time to make this thing like a street freak, basically. We've got a V8, I think it's a 289. It's a two barrel under the hood, of course, but you know they added flares, they've got the Keystone Classics, all sorts of like crazy interior, like pleated diamond plate, all this stuff, just really fancy interior. But for some reason, wherever this car was parked, it just rusted away. There's holes in the roof that you could fit your hand in. I mean, all around the back glass is gone. The hood is rusted through. All the flares are destroyed. But it was cool enough and I, I bought it with like a collection of a bunch of vehicles. Next to that is a 1970 Mustang Coupe. And this car right here has got a 351, a rebuilt C4 transmission or C6, I can't remember. Um, the guy I got it from, he was just clearing out house. He wanted it gone. He spent a ton of money to get this car where it is. You know, it's still pretty rough, but the engine and transmission are very, very solid. It just hasn't ran in forever, basically. And uh, I wanted to get that thing to run. I bought it with the project car that's going with the Neon SRT4, but I got it for dirt cheap, and I couldn't hold out on buying it because it's just such a, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's a coupe. It doesn't bother me. I think it's still a cool car. 
It just needs to be able to run. I don't have any of the front accessories. That's the big deal. I don't have any pulleys, no brackets, nothing. That's what I'm trying to find right now to where I can get it to run. I'm missing, you know, some of the front grill and bumper parts, I think. But there's a lot of stuff in the trunk that I haven't even looked through. So, heck, maybe be a little fun field car or something. Just go do some donuts with or hit some back roads with it because it's just perfect for that. And it's got the uh, Cobra Jet hood on the top. And I can just see a ton of RAM sticking through that. You know, that's, that's just me, though. Now for the world's worst CUDA. <laughs> Unfortunately, this car, it's been sitting because it needs a lot of work. Now, if you remember this video, I bought this to go to Holly Mo Party. We put a gas tank in it, a fuel pressure regulator, a carburetor, and the fuel pump was the weak link. I had done all this stuff to the fuel system to get it good and sorted out, and the fuel pump gave out on me at the burnout competition. We took the windshield out because you can't see anything. Uh, it's just a really rough car. Now I bought this one from the exact same person that had the crew cab Dodge I showed you earlier. And you know, I, I wanted to do something else with it, but you know, it's it just needs, it needs a lot. And the timing's way off, the fuel pressure is way off. I mean, it's just, it's so loud, you can't see out of it. And the reason it's parked sideways is because it doesn't have reverse, so I just pull it in sideways like this. It still runs. You know, it's got a battery in it. I think it's dead at this point, but if you charged it up, it would fire up. You know, it's it's mechanically speaking pretty sound. It just needs some work. And before I get too deep into it, I just wanted to make sure that I'm like, is this a smart thing to do? Because it is very, very, very rough. But I think it could be made something really cool. You know, the thing is, it's got a just a basic bone stock big block I don't even know if it has a, any kind of can in it it's just really loud and obnoxious uncomfortable and that's the thing you can't drive it anywhere because you can't see out of it because of the Lexan windows so if we fix that I think we would be better off but again it's just upcoming its turn we gotta just get some stuff out of the way before we can knock out other projects so it's just waiting in line Now, I know you guys know what this car is. This is a 1970 Sports Satellite 318 with a three-speed on the column. If you've seen Junkyard Digs and Thunderhead 289, they got this car out running and, you know, yard driving after decades. You know, it was like an eight-part series, and the whole thing was that it was, you know, bought by this guy, and he, he loved the car, but I can't remember why it got parked, but it was basically buried up to the rockers trees all around it 
and it ran. It runs very good. I actually parked it in this spot, but every frame rail is gone. The floorboard is holding up the rear axle. Like, that's how bad it is. There's no rear frame rails at all. It's actually buckled the quarters. The car looks way better than it is, and that's what's kind of deceiving about it. So don't think that I'm like parking this thing and it's ruining. The car's already ruined. Like it's far gone. But what I want to do with it, instead of like doing a nut and bolt restoration on a 318 satellite, take the body off, use the good parts, put some quarters on it, you know, maybe replace some of the fenders and fix the rockers where it's rusted out. Because the top half of the body really isn't terrible. It's just all the frame rails are gone. So if you take like a Challenger, like a newer Challenger, they're basically the same wheelbase. So if you can use the running gear and the whole pan and everything, like, you know, just cut the body off of a Challenger and put this satellite on it, repaint everything, and you've got a nice car at the end of it. That's really what I want to do because it's going to be cheaper and way less labor to do it that way, and the car is going to be way better than it could have originally. But the engine is solid. I mean, it's really, really good. So be on the lookout for that in the future. I just got to find a Challenger that I think is worthy of cutting up. So it's just on the chopping block. This is a 1965 Dodge Dart that I bought from Sleeper Dude. He posted a video about it on his second channel of me coming to purchase it, so I'll link that also down in the description below. Now, I haven't done anything with it besides use it for parts because that's really all I bought it for. I wanted it for my 65 Dart 4-speed car, and it's been able to provide plenty of parts, not just for that, but for other vehicles. It's pretty rough. It's a 6-cylinder, 3-speed on the column. I did drive it to where it sits, believe it or not. So it's pretty cool, but again, it's just nothing that you'll see in an upcoming video. There's nothing to do to it, but it's good for parts. And I'm selling a 66 Dart two-door, and that's what I'm planning on doing with it is selling it as a package deal. So that's just how it is. I don't have anything else to do with it, but I got to weed it around it. So here you go. Now this is the 1965 Falcon that had the cracked block in it we JB welded. I pulled it down here, we pushed it back up into the woods, and that's where it sits. Uh, there's no forward or reverse gears. The transmission's shot, it was full of water, so we just gave up on it. It was cool, it was fun, you know, it was just, gosh, it's just rough. And, you know, I, I hope somebody could do something with it. We honestly thought about donating to our local high school so they could use it as a project but I think it's too much of a project. I don't know if they would be able to do what it needs for this car. You know, there's that in another car that you'll see in a second, but I mean, this thing ran great. And that's what bums me out the most is that how good it runs. And it's actually a really, really good running engine. It's just cracked all down the side of the block. It had zero blow by, it didn't smoke. You know, it was really a good car. Um, that's just the problem with some of this stuff. When you just let it sit, and you know, all these cars that I have out here don't have water in them. So I, I don't want to crack any blocks like this Falcon is. And it's just sad. But hey, it's just how things go. Uh, it does run. It did move a little bit, but not very far. But uh, we're actually just going to let it sit until somebody wants it. Up next, we've got a 64 and a 62 Falcon. Again, this all came from the same place where I bought all these cars from the scrapper. It was all a package deal. Uh, the 64 I never did anything with because it would basically be a rehash of the 65. I used it for parts. Uh, you can see it you know, briefly whenever I pulled the carburetor off of it to rebuild. And then the 62 wagon, haven't done anything with that one yet. I think that would be a cool car to do something with, but it's rough. I can't even pop the hood on it. That's how rough it is. Like, I don't even know if it has an engine in it or not, to be honest with you. So 
we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea what this thing's got going on for it, but it's still a cool car, and I want to see both of them get cleaned up and done something with, but, you know, the 65 and the 64 would be great as a package deal. I would love to sell both of those cars and, and see them have something done with them, whether it be for parts or actually restore it. I think the 65 could be fixed. I mean, if you take both cars and make really a, one good car out of it, it's totally doable. Like, that's not even something that could be achieved. It's just... I don't really want to do it myself, but I'd love to see a Falcon guy go and do it themselves. But once we get these two done, we are done with the entirety of weed eating my front yard. Well, folks, there you have it. We've got every single car out here completely cleaned out around it. And it looks a whole lot better. As you can see, 
<laughs> it's a lot of work to keep up with all these cars out here and I'm just happy to say that it looks much better. Well, we spent like two months with these cars not being cut around. Just goes to show you how quickly grass grows up and makes things really get out of hand really fast. So I hope that kind of gave you an idea of where some of these cars are, what some new projects to be looking out for, and what you might want to see in the future. And hey, there's still some cars out here that need some love. We're going to continue to work on, so don't think that they're neglected. They just had to be parked for a little bit, and hey, that's just how it is. But man, does it look a lot better out here. I am so much happier with having cars that you can actually see around and walk around and open the doors without having to worry about if a snake's gonna pop out. And one last look across the hill. Looking really, really good, folks. You can see I was moving my tent with me to keep some shade because my camera kept overheating. But that's just how it is. I mean, it's about 102 degrees out here right now. Yesterday it was 105. That's just what it is. It's good exercise, that's for sure. Well, folks, that's going to do it for uh, the first generation of cutting grass with Dylan. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm soaking wet. I'm hot. I'm out of breath because I'm allergic to all this stuff. And I can't breathe, so if I'm wheezing, I'm sorry. But hey, it's all cut. It's clean. Dixie's having a great time. She loves it. She's just happy the fact that I can be outside with her and play. So there it is. If you want to see more of this, if you want to see me do this again, let me know down in the comments. I've got other vehicles that could be had this done to so I can definitely have a lot more fun in the heat cutting grass and if you want to see me cut the yard I can do that as well I just didn't do it this time because I wanted to get it done but again don't think these cars are neglected just because they're sitting out here it's just the fact that life can sometimes get in the way but when you maintain it if you keep it cut it doesn't become a problem it's just when you don't so thank you guys for watching uh, be sure to like subscribe do all those great things and I will see you in the next one